Yeah, and I'm at first to say the operational performance, we are actually up 17% in profit and 20, uh, if you calculate in same, uh, same value uh, currencies, we are up 27%. What you are referring to, it's the legacy project, the Kusile, which we reported before, and that is, of course, paying the fine for, uh, for, for the Kusile project that was 2014, finally. We are getting it out of our books and we're happy. And that is a one time cost of 325 million, which we uh, actually reported uh, early this uh, month. So if you back that out, we see our earnings per share is up 9% uh, compared to last year. So I think the operation performance is going fantastic and we're cleaning up our books. So it's, it's, it's a good. Bjorn, very good morning to you, sir. Um, how exciting and how problematic is China? Uh, it, it seems to be a very mixed part of the world for you. Less disruptions this time around. That's really good news as well. Uh, I presume the sales to China are still very strong. You can enlighten me on that as well. But, but problematic in the fact that it is, again, at the epicentre of concerns about the relationship between the West and China, uh, not least semiconductors. Uh, first, I have to say that China is extremely important for us. It's about 17% of our sales, and we have 15,000 people there. So it is a very important part of uh, ABB. We can see, if you just first see the, the market development there, the housing market is, as we all know, been under pressure for quite some uh, time, while the industry part of the business is doing quite good. Um, of course, geopolitical challenges uh, are problematic for, for anyone doing business in, in China. And we, of course, you know, also from last quarter, we had uh, huge interruptions from the COVID uh, shutdowns in uh, Shanghai. This has eased up, of course, and we've seen during this quarter uh, uh, quite a smooth business in, uh, in uh, China. So, so to go to my question about China in a little bit more detail, what is the greatest challenge for you in China going forward? The fact that growth has fallen dramatically from the halcyon days or the fact that it is at the epicentre of geopolitics? I mean, you know, we are a global company, but we are operating very locally. This means today 95% of all products and services that we sell in China is actually produced and generated in China. So quite independent from the rest of the world. That makes it, of course, an advantage in a situation uh, like this. The housing market is, of course, down, as we've been following for, for some while, while we think that the uh, the industry part of the market is still uh, keeping up at a good pace. We should, of course, know that China has been growing now for, for two and a half years, almost three years, quarter by quarter. So we are, of course, comparing with uh, very strong numbers also. So I would say that the, uh, the demand is, is still on a good level, even though the growth rates are lower.